Boone Township, Pittsburgh, and the internet in general, although if you're on the internet, you can watch us at any time. That's right. We <laughs> think that you should. We think you should. Welcome to Yin's Bruin. Yin's Bruin. Yin's Bruin is the number one craft beer and home brewing pod. I almost nope, said podcast. No, nope, no. Nope. The podcast is the other thing we do. <laughs> this is the TV show of the podcast. That's right. <laughs> uh, but this is the number one home brew TV show in Moon Township because there isn't another one. That's right. The best and only. <laughs> yeah. I'm Steve, and this is Adam. And as I've already alluded to with my mush mouth, there is a podcast that we are hosts of, and it is called Hop Nation USA. And on that show, we talk about craft beer. Yes. However, on this show, we're going to get a little more homey. Yes. Uh, we like to talk about home brewing. Uh, and in past episodes, we've talked about particular ingredients. We've talked about equipment. And tonight is no different. Uh, tonight, we're actually going to talk about one of the key four ingredients uh, that we have in making beer. Uh, everybody knows the key four ingredients, but just in case you don't, I'll go through them. They are water, yeast, malts, and what we're going to talk about tonight, hops. That's right. We're going to talk about that wonderful, wonderful green leaf that Adam is so, so opposed to. <laughs> I really am. Uh, for those of you who don't know, hops are that green flower that go into the that go into the beer and give it that bitterness, but it can also impart flavors of citrus, floral, uh, pininess. You can also get some earthy and woody tones, even spiciness out of a hop. And Adam is not a fan of beers with a lot of those flavors in them. That is correct. But they're essential to the recipe, so we can't ignore them. That's right. But we can have just a little bit. Yeah, you can have just a and little bit. A little bit, bit is okay. <laughs> what are you drinking over there tonight, Steve? So tonight, I'm drinking one of my favorite stouts from Dogfish Head. And a stout is going to be something that doesn't use a whole lot of hop in it. It will use those more subtle and earthy toned hops. And Adam, you're drinking? I have no idea. Okay. I honestly have no idea. And the reason I he say this... He played home brewer roulette. <laughs> uh, that is exactly what has happened. Uh, this was a beer I actually got. Uh, it was an exchange at a local homebrew event. Uh, and unfortunately, for me at least, uh, it was unlabeled. And then it went into my beer fridge, at which point I completely forgot what it was. Uh, so I'm going to go on a bit of an adventure right now, because I haven't <laughs> had this beer, and I don't know what it is. All right, well, while Adam sips on that and tries to figure out what's going on, uh, I just want to talk a little bit more about how hops are used. Hops usually will go into uh, the boil and the wort in that early stage of brewing, but they're also used in dry hopping, Yes, which is used with after fermentation, and they can be used to impart more flavor that way. Yes, uh, just to, to go back, popular. <laughs> uh, just a little bit, uh, Steve had mentioned wort. What wort is, is that is the unfermented beer uh, that you get once you're done uh, boiling it. Uh, and that's uh, it just sort of a, uh, not really a technical term, but it's a, a yeah. hobbyist term. Uh, it's, a, so it's, a, it's a vocabulary term. Yes. If this was Pee Wee's Playhouse, it could be a term of the day. <laughs> However, I don't see anything to fall from the ceiling, so I think we're safe. We also don't have a talking chair. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> so what do you say we take a quick break? Yeah. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to take a quick break right now. We're going to come back with another home brewer. And hopefully he's marked his beers and he knows what he's drinking. Because <laughs> well, I, I don't think you figured out what you were drinking. I don't know what it is in particular, but I can tell you that I don't hate it. Right. Uh, I'm glad that I got this exchange. And I know that when I got it, I liked it. I just completely forget what it was. So during the break, I'm going to take a couple more sips, going to figure out what this is. And we'll be right back with segment two. Okay. Welcome back to Yin's Brewin, uh, Moon Township's finest home brew show. Uh, with me, as always, is Steve. Yeah, and I'm still here. <laughs> that's true. Well, yeah, you didn't run, go screaming into the parking lot. No. And as a matter of fact, we have ourselves a special guest, Dennis. Dennis, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank uh, you. He Appreciate is a, a fellow home brewer uh, here with us today, here to talk about his wares. Uh, and as you can see, we already got him poured out. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to hand it over to Dennis here for just a moment and talk about his beer. Uh, what kind of beer is it and what kind of inspiration went into this beer? Why did you make this beer? So Dennis, I'm just going to throw you right in the pool right now. Oh, absolutely. I like it. I uh, can't swim, but you know, I love <laughs> You're jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up with this beer? So we have a mango saison going on here. And the reason why I chose that one, because the uh, wife at home, she loves saison. So it just made sense. I can make a bunch of it and she's happy and I'm happy. 
Fair enough. That is a match made in heaven. I <laughs> so, like it. <laughs> so tell us more about kind of the Saison style. It's not a style that we've talked about right. uh, on the show before, so kind of give us more info. Absolutely. On so a Saison, it's more of a farmhouse ale. Mm -hmm. uh, it originally was produced on farm, so you can be out there working during the day but still have something light, refreshing uh, with your lunch during the work day. That's when it originally came about. Yeah. Saisons are also typically a top fermenting ale, mm -hmm. if I'm... I think I'm pretty correct on that being. That I like to think so. Did, I'm not going to correct you. Yeah, the fer the fermenting barrels would just sit in actual barns, you know, aka a farmhouse ale, and the uh, low temperatures of the outside would allow for wild yeast to even gather, and that's how you would get a lot of the flavors that get imparted that way in the old style. Now you can control it and actually do it in your basement <laughs> <laughs> or beer closet or yes. beer closet. <laughs> much more sanitary, much more appropriate. Yeah. So, uh, uh, do you have any more stats on this? Uh, yeah, I actually, let me go and pull that stuff up. So I clocked this guy using uh, my refractometer at 5.3% for your okay. ABV. The original gravity is around 1.047. Um, you have a deep gold color. Uh, as far as difficulty, as far as home brewing is concerned, it's considered intermediate. So okay. pretty much as long as you brewed one or two batches, you can go ahead and jump in and brew this pretty easily. Okay, so yeah, pretty easy beer. And you said it was a mango. Did you use a puree or... Yeah, it was an extract. extract. Yeah. So everything that I've done up to this point has been extract brewing. Just haven't had the uh, capability of jumping into grain, which is going to take a lot more equipment. You need a right, lot right. bigger right. footprint. So. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in trying this. Saisons well, aren't always my favorite style, yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> Go in with an open mind. I'll never turn down a friend's beer. So. Oh, gentlemen. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, cheers. On the nose, there's a lot of fruit flavor, and it definitely gets backed up. I'll be perfectly honest. I just jumped right in. Well, yeah, I smelled it. Right. Yeah, I smelled it. I know you guys did it. <laughs> Dennis doesn't have to. He knows <laughs> yeah, what no, it is. <laughs> so I really like this beer, and what I like about it is, yes, it has that kind of Saison feel to it. it Saisons can, can be yeah. a bit dry right. and, and a bit... Uh, Floral, I guess, is a political way of saying it. That's right. Um, floral. Uh, another way of saying it is horse blanket. Yeah, yes. I've there's heard a, that. There's a yeah. Rolling around in an old barn. <laughs> yeah. There's a term called horse blanket where it smells very, smells and tastes very much just like old hay that you would find in a horse blanket. Right. Uh, fortunately, uh, this does not uh, have too much of a, a horse blanket no, taste to no, it. Uh, it absolutely has, not. It is definitely uh, counteracted with that mango. I think it is very nice. Yeah, this is actually very, it's pretty sweet and juicy. I yeah. enjoy this one. Yeah. So. Oh, well, that, that's I'm digging good for on me. This beer. Yeah. Good for you. You did <laughs> a good Steve, one. If Steve likes it, it has to be good. <laughs> if, you can, if you can make a Saison or a Sour, you are uh, you know, in the upper echelon, I would right. think of. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's go ahead. Or at least just appealing again. to my sensibilities. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say we go back in time a little bit uh, and talk about you and, and home brewing as a whole? What brought you into home brewing? What was the, the deciding factor to say, I want to try this? I want to get into home brewing? It's a good question. So, let everything get a little wavy as we take a trip back in time. <laughs> so, I, I have a 90 gallon saltwater aquarium at home. Hmm. That's an interesting way of starting the yeah, story. I knew you would like it. So <laughs> I, I'm an engineer by trade, and I love playing around with different parameters. You know, creating an ecosystem really got me going. And the, uh, the wife, she saw how much I loved, you know, taking care of the uh, aquarium. She went ahead and said, hey, this guy he loves craft beer. He probably really enjoy um, brewing his own beer at home. And she, you know, she gets a drink free beer, which is great. So she went ahead and got me a whole setup, carboy, all the equipment I needed, um, different kits and everything, put it together. And I was able to start doing some really fun stuff. And she was right, absolutely loved it. Loved controlling you know, all the parameters out there and uh, creating it. In my opinion, home brewing is where art meets science. And that's kind of what we get to do all the time. So Which I enjoy is why it. it goes engineer, engineer, and I have a communications degree. So <laughs> Art, science. <laughs> I don't say art. I'm just, I have a communications degree. <laughs> so uh, if, you're, if you're not drinking uh, your own homebrew, uh, what kind of beers do you tend to gravitate towards mm -hmm. on, on a day-to-day -day basis? What's, uh, what's your style? So I would say my go-to style definitely depends on... The time of the year and what's going on, right? So I'm a big stout, as you can see, oh, stout yeah. porter fan. Absolutely love it. I'm starting to get really into, you know, the haze, the haze craze. It's yeah. Oh hitting, yes, hitting Pittsburgh and uh, North America. So started getting a little bit some of the hazy beers from some of the local uh, breweries around town. So if it's really warm out, I'll have one of those guys. But I tend to lean more towards the stout and porter side. Very cool. cool. 
And like us, you're more than just a home brewer and more than just a beer enthusiast. You're also an entrepreneur in the world of craft beer. Absolutely. Uh, just give us a little, tell us about your business. Like, what do you do? Absolutely. So uh, initially when I started brew home brewing, uh, I wanted to open up my own brewery, but the market's so saturated out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, just around Pittsburgh, we have 47 different breweries yeah. going on. So instead of competing, I'd rather work with all those breweries. So I started first at Brewbox, which is a craft beer subscription box company. Uh, we focus just on the branding, the merchandise from breweries. we rather you get a cool pint glass in the mail and you go down and support your local brewery. So all kinds of cool stuff from beer jelly, beer infused hot sauces, beer candles, anything you can think of it's going to be in your box. We send it very, out every very month. Very cool way to get the, get the word out, especially absolutely. on local businesses. Yep, absolutely. And we support small up to the regional size, but everyone in the craft beer industry, everyone's small when you compare them to some of the big macro guys right. out there. So very that's cool. what we do. So I'm going to take it back just a little bit. And we we're talking about your Saison. And even before that, we we're talking about the four main ingredients of beer. So what is the main ingredient that is hops? as far as your saison goes. Yeah, so as far as hops are concerned, you're gonna have an ounce of Brewer's Gold and an ounce of Liberty were the hops that went into this specific recipe. Okay, cool. And those are, are those generally kind of milder or? Yeah, they're gonna be more on the mild side because with the saison, you don't wanna you know, make it over the top hop that it's gonna kill all the other flavors that you are expected to get out of a saison. Cool. So it's more, much more of an accompaniment rather than Absolutely. the main show. It's, hey, we're here and we're <laughs> going to preserve. Awesome. Well, I think with that, maybe we can just dip into a little bit of the history of what a hop is. And uh, I think it's just best to start out and say that a hop is a vine plant. It yes. grows on vines. That's <laughs> right. accurate. Uh, if you've seen anything from a vine farm, or if you've seen anything from a hop farm, which I've actually been to, I've been to the Rogue Farms, and they just have cascading vines just of hops all the way down mm -hmm. and floor to ceiling. <laughs> so if you want to go to a local business that actually has a, a trellis and they are growing their own hops, actually the industry public house mm -hmm. in North Fayette. Really? Uh, yes, they, they grow hops on the side of the building. Uh, not many people know about that, uh, but it's a neat little feature and I, and I hope that they use those hops in their own brews that they, they have on tap there. Yeah. I also believe Sorgal Farms grows their own hops yes. as well. Yes, yes. So if you're looking for a local place to just buy local hops from, I believe you can get them at Sorgal's. It was mm -hmm. just there this yeah. past weekend. Yeah. Fancy. Uh, moving on from what a hop plant is, it, it has a very specific biological name, and that's Humulus lupulus. <laughs> and that sounds very much like uh, something Willy Wonka would come wow. up with. And very much so. Very I much so. Spell it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had to spell it. <laughs> and it Just took me a couple of tries. It F7. <laughs> it's right. F7 will help you out. <laughs> so a neat little tidbit on this is hops are actually related to the cannabis plant. Uh, they are a cousin to the cannabis. Uh, however, they do not have any THC no. in them. No. Uh, so you don't have to mm. worry about any of that. Uh, you don't have to get a, any addiction worries or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, it's also not illegal to use that hops. Is, that is also true. You can grow your own, no problem. Depending on which state you're watching this in. I think that's important. Thanks for putting that out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but they are actually used very similarly. The, uh, the hop vine is, uh, it has its vine structure and it has its leaf structure, but it also has the cone. And the cone is actually what will go into the brewing process. And within the cone, there exists lupulin powder. And it's a yellow pollen like substance and that's really how it uh, imparts the citrus notes or whatever flavor that's uh, that specific hop strain is carrying right so and, and that's one of the things that you have to worry about is how are you going to use this hop uh, are you using it more as a bittering agent are you using it more for aroma are you using it to add floral notes it, how are you going to use that and what's important in determining that is number one the type of hop that you're going to use and how you're going to use it whenever you're creating your beer. Uh, and the biggest way to determine that is, is essentially by the style and what do you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a basic rule of thumb is if you want something that is more of a bitter beer, uh, a lot of times your IPAs, your double IPAs, even sometimes your heavier pale ales will be very, very bitter. And during the the boiling process what you want to do is the more bitter you want that beer to be the earlier you want to add your hops exactly uh that's how you introduce the lupulin powder very early on uh and just back to what adam was saying when you decide the kind of beer that you want to brew 
there has been enough advancement in genetic, I mean, genetic engineering, yeah. really, is what yeah. it is. Uh, but it, genetic engineering when, and horticulture, as far as uh, hops grows, uh, there's a number of strains out there. They have all kinds of different properties. Usually their properties are listed, so you can pick out the kind of flavors you're looking to impart onto your beer. Yes, uh, a lot of times at your local homebrew store, if you're, you're going to the cooler, and usually hops are, are kept in a refrigerator. They're, they're supposed to be kept mm -hmm. nice and cool until you, yep, you actually use it in your boil. Uh, on the packaging, they'll give you those notes, whether this hop is supposed to be more of a floral note or citrus or pine or, or what have you. And the other big piece of information that they have on there is what's called the alpha acid percentage. Mm -hmm. So the alpha acid percentage is going to give you a good idea of how strong or effective the hop is going to be. Uh, and it, it's a typical scale, it's nothing crazy, <laughs> uh, but it will range from down in the two and three and four percents, and about that range is about like a fuggle hop, which you would use for a stout or a porter, up into the 13, 15 percent. Those are your really heavy, really floral, they have a lot of flavor, a lot of bit, bitterness, and you know, essentially acidity, really, because mm -hmm. it is an acid. Right. Uh, but those are going to go into your IPAs and your bigger beers of that nature. Right. So when you're at the homebrew store, uh, there are usually two options on how your hops can be presented to you, how, you, how they are essentially sold. Uh, the first method is what is called the whole hop. And what that is, is they will give you essentially the entire hop nugget. Uh, and you can take that whole hop nugget, it's uh, a whole leaf nugget, it's eh, about the size of a small pine cone, uh, and you can throw that right into your boil. Uh, that is, I would say, more the traditional uh, way of doing it. Uh, that's the way they did it back in the olden times, whenever the monks were doing it back in Bavaria. Yes, by uh, traditional you mean old, very, yes, very old. Yes, I was, I was being political. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was being polite. Uh, but the more modern way of doing it is a lot of times the manufacturers will will take that lupin, lupulin powder and they will uh, produce them in, in little pellets or nuggets uh, and a lot of times uh, they come in one ounce packets and a one ounce packet is probably depending on what type of hop you have will be equivalent to about I'd say eight to ten ounces of an actual uh, whole leaf hop so it's much more concentrated yeah yeah, again, that's easier to work with, especially if you're a brewer that who's on the smaller scale and using extract brews. You definitely kind of want to lean towards uh, pellets just because uh, they're effective, but they don't take up a whole lot of space. You don't have to worry about freshness or anything like right. that. It's so just easier. Just it, easier it's just easier. It, but especially it, it, learning the trade. Yes, yes exactly. You, know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Yes. And that's usually also what's going to come in what are known as kit brews, which come with extract uh, malt as well. Everything's been condensed down into very simple, easy to use <laughs> yes, exactly. packets. Uh, another way that hops is presented though, and is becoming far more popular, is the actual lupulin powder itself. And this is a way that you can introduce lupulin powder without having to deal with any kind of the vegetation or leaf or anything like that. And this has also become very popular and as Dennis was talking about, the haze craze. <laughs> old haze train. Yeah. That's right. Jump on it. For hazy IPAs, <laughs> um, you're going to introduce the lupulin powder usually after fermentation has occurred into what would be known as a dry hop process. And the dry hop process is going to import, the dry hop process is going to impart a lot more flavor into your beer. And it's also going to cut a whole hell of a lot of that bitterness <laughs> because you're not going to deal with any kind of vegetation. The vegetation is usually kind of what gives you the bitterness, you know, the, the, the bite, the bite. Mm -hmm. So it, if you see a, a hazy IPA or a juicy IPA and you don't like bitter beers, uh, don't completely write it off right away because a lot of times it will have a lot of, of juicy flavor to yeah. it. Uh, a lot of times it'll, it'll be a borderline orange juice or a pineapple juice kind of kind of oh, flavor so to it. So dank and tasty. There you go. <laughs> so they already have another convert right over here. <laughs> so it, if you're in a bar or you're at a distributor or you're in a brewery and you want to kind of get an idea of how bitter a beer can be, uh, there is a scale uh, that brewers use to kind of give that information out. And that is what is called the IBUs. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that, that term on the, on the show in the past. Uh, what that actually stands for is the International Bitterness Unit. 
Who came up with that? I have no idea. Uh, so we're not going to explore that. Some smart person. That's right. <laughs> Some science person. Exactly. So uh, it is actually a very easy scale to, to interpret. Uh, zero on the IBU scale means there is almost zero bitterness. A lot of times that'll get into your, your wheat beers, uh, your porters, and your stouts. A lot of times those are going to be a very low IBU beer. Uh, on the exact opposite end of that, that's where you get into your IPAs. Uh, and there are IPAs out there, especially the West Coast IPAs, that are just, they are, they're out to hurt you. If, if you pick, <laughs> just to give an example, now Adam's a bit weak on this. <laughs> this. This isn't his forte of beer. He likes to keep his IBUs under 30. That is correct. But if you're into exploring IPAs, you want to probably <laughs> grab around 30 to 50. That's a good starter IPA. And if you see something reaching 80 to 100, that's going to be very, very rough to deal with. <laughs> yes, and that's when you start getting into beers called the Hop Slam or the Hop Secutioner. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah, they usually have hop plus something awful. Yeah, something that's going to hurt you. Wouldn't recommend having those guys with dinner. It's that totally <laughs> going to overrun anything else that's that you're right. having. Yeah, for sure. uh, those beers will wreck shop. Uh, there's a beer out there called the Pallet Wrecker. That's exactly what it does, and it ruins, as Dennis said, your food for the evening. Oh, yeah. right, right. Start off with some other beers that you want to try and actually remember what they taste like. Right. <laughs> those are the beers that you plan accordingly for. Yes. So with that, uh, Dennis, uh, let's get back to your beer for a second here, yeah. uh, because it's not a hoppy IPA. It is not. And I finished mine. I did not, because uh, I, I was have savoring more. it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just is... saying, I want to point out that I, I already stated that Saison's are not necessarily my favorite, right. but I finished mine. So again, I'm not just bold. That is true. Mm, very nice. Bullying you. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo. I was actually you. nervous. <laughs> I got to watch out the round. <laughs> I was like, what do I still have left? Oh, yeah. I have that mango saison. <laughs> you oh, picked the winner. Oh, crap. Steve yeah. does not like mango <laughs> saisons. <laughs> that, this is the winner. I, I, did, I did enjoy this. You, Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So I will go the exact opposite direction and say that I didn't finish it because I'm savoring it. Ah, very uh, good. I'm I have three in, more bottles. Have yes. <laughs> well, not once we're done here because I'm going to take at least one. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a, a fantastic beer for... This is... A, the kind of beer that I think would be a good wind down beer. Mm -hmm. Where you want something a little bit fruity, obviously with the mango you're gonna have a little bit of that fruit kick, but it's not gonna be overly fruity where it's, you know, borderline pina colada kind of stuff. Right. So this I think is a very good wind down beer. And I'm going to savor a lot of this, and then I'm going to go take at least one bottle home with me. That's fine, I still have a case at home, so. <laughs> See, I, I would actually would have called it a startup beer. This mm. is a good this is a good brunch lunch beer. Also it, true. The mangoes in it is kind of like a breakfast fruit, and you just start yeah. that way. I like it. It's pretty versatile. It is. Yeah, from right. you guys. yeah, yeah. It you works. Know, <laughs> I enjoy cracking one open after a long day at, uh, you know, doing different events around the city, coming home, starting maybe a little fire outside, and just relaxing. Yeah. This is a Swiss Army beer. Yeah. Swiss Army beer. I like mm -hmm. it. But it's American. Very good. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I think we're going to take a little bit of break, and we're going to come back, and I have a bit of a hop challenge. Oh, hop challenge. Okay. For Adam and Dennis. Uh, I like where this is going. That's right. Game you on. like where this is going. <laughs> Adam won't. <laughs> <laughs> but stay tuned and find out how Adam gets really upset. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Yin's Bruin, the number one craft beer and homebrew show on Moon Public Access Television. I'm here with Dennis from First Sip Brew Box. This guy. And my co-host, Adam. This guy. And we're about to play a little bit of a hop game with the two of them. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I hope you guys are ready for this. Uh, I'm not, but let's one. do it anyway. <laughs> so I, I found some candy. Like from a business or like yeah, at, at your business. house? <laughs> yeah, well, no. <laughs> I didn't just find candy in couch cushions. I'm sorry. That's fair. I still try yeah. them. Uh, but the, this candy is actually made from hops. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you each a piece of candy, and then mm, I want you to candy. give yeah, a little piece of candy, <laughs> and then I want you to taste it, and then uh, see if you can guess which hop it is. Whew. Now it's going to be kind of a first buzz in yeah. type deal. Do we have lifelines? Like no lifelines. I don't know if anybody can help you. <laughs> Tell you what, you can ask me and I can ask you. Yeah, you can ask each other. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah. I, I will give you hints as we go along, as, as it becomes more and more apparent that you don't uh, understand. I don't have hops memorized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. That's right fine. <laughs> but uh, we'll start out with uh, these little brown guys right here. So take your candies. Thank you. Go ahead and unwrap them. 
Or we're just shoving this. Yeah, just shove it in your mouth. All right, well, uh, that's fair. Oh, I am an adult. I <laughs> suck at opening wrappers. There we go. Well, this is definitely not a root beer barrel. Nope, totally wasn't. A zero percent. Oh man, a lot of hop on your. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you your first clue while you guys are mulling this over. Yes, mulling. It's you. It, it's an all-purpose hop. It's used both for bittering and for flavoring. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It, uh, it, you're supposed to be tasting some citrus and tropical notes in there. Okay. I don't know if you are. Uh, are you? Do you get that? A little bit, yeah. No, little I bit actually that. like it. I, yeah, I'm sure you enjoy piece, it. I would actually I'm sure you enjoy it. I'm more vacation. focused on Adam's pain <laughs> and upsetness. If, it's <laughs> fine. if it's not Fuggle Hop, he's That's not right. having it. I live that Fuggle life. <laughs> so, so we were talking earlier about alpha acids and how that kind of gauges how uh, effective the hop is going to be and kind of how much flavor it imparts and how bitter it is. Uh, the, this hop that they're currently chewing on, mulling over, is, uh, is only 6.5% to 7.5%. So can that I ask out a question? A lot of them. You can go ahead and ask a question. Is this hop native to America? It is not. Ooh, then I'm back to zero. Okay. Uh, I will give you country of origin, though. Okay. This hop is predominantly grown in New Zealand. Oh. If only I knew where hops grew. <laughs> <laughs> is this, uh, this isn't a Citra or a Chinook? Or no, this isn't a Citra or a Chinook, no. Mm. No, I believe those are actually I'm going to come in grown. with mm. a, a final answer. Okay. I'm going to go with Magnum. Magnum? Yes. Okay. No. Okay, <laughs> then. All right. And it's not Mosaic either. Oh. But you're actually both kind of in the same realm because it does start with an M. This is a New Zealand hop, and it's called the Motuka. Oh, Motuka. how did I not get that I, one? Yeah, I kind of threw you guys. That's the, fair. This is a really hard one to get. It is. But it's actually pretty prevalent lately. And Do you have any... Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, no, go ahead. Do you have any clue, like, what type of um, maybe beers in the industry that use that hop? Absolutely. I was just about to give you that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, this, studying up. But this is actually commonly found in Stone and Joy Buy. Oh, yeah. okay. uh, like I said, it, it's supposed to be an all-purpose hop, so this isn't necessarily going to be the front runner, and that's again why it's going to be hard for you guys to guess it, right, <laughs> because it's right. not usually used, you know, as a single hop. It's pretty common to be a background hop for adding extra flavor and everything to it. That makes sense. Stone yeah. and Joy by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're back now with our second candy. This one's a yellow one. It's got a little stripe on it. I like stripes. None of this is going to help you. <laughs> Candy Crush, you got That's a mean just... move going on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, as soon as I make the three, it'll disappear, so i got to keep them away from each other. But uh, go ahead and take your, take your next candy. Thank you. Nice. Start yourselves out. So hmm. as, they're, as they're getting ready with this next candy, uh, the last one that I had was not a front runner, as I said. It, it's more just kind of a background hop used for flavoring, things like this. This one that they're having right now is Whoa. absolutely an upfront, and you can just hear from Dennis's woe. It's there. Th there's a lot of flavor in this one. Yes, there is. <laughs> and Adam, super, super unhappy. Yes, there <laughs> is. Again, it's delicious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the hop that they're uh, the hop they're enjoying right now is hmm. specifically used for bittering. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> so more like a 12 to 14 percent. A little bit more, but yeah. yeah. Oh, how high, <laughs> how high an alpha is no, no, this? No, it, no, it's actually what Dennis, it is 12, 14 oh, percent okay on then. the alpha acids. Okay then. Yeah. I guess I know acids, just not names of hops. <laughs> well, hey, that's a good guess. So you can tell, you can tell how effective it is right from tasting yeah. it. I think Adam was getting that as well as how unhappy he seems to be at this moment. He's, He's just looking for a paper towel, my, I see him. <laughs> my yeah. silence says it all. Yeah, so uh, another clue for you guys. This is the second most grown hop in Oregon. Ooh, Chinook? Specifically, no, no, no. Specifically in Oregon, then. Again, the origins get me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Cascade. Ooh, mm, that's mm -mm. interesting. Mm. That's Sorry. a Washington hop, isn't it? Well, no, it's just Cascade isn't that high. Oh, well, there you yeah. go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cascade's alphas are a lot lower than this one. Uh, yeah. Citra? Not Citra. So I'll, 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 oh, give, you, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Might as well give the answer. Yeah, well, no, I'll give you a hint. And as soon as I give you the hint, this will be a first buzz in. Okay. The most prominent beer that you can find it in is Trogue's Nugget Nectar. And Adam got it. No, wow. I don't. Oh. Well, you buzzed in. <laughs> I did. I thought you buzzed in. And then I blanked. Oh, I totally man. blanked. 
It's Trogue's Nugget Nectar. Yeah, I love the beer, but I don't, I don't look into it. <laughs> I don't know what they put into it. Nugget? Yes! Okay, then. <laughs> I, a nugget honestly, box. I felt like it was a trap. No, <laughs> I didn't, didn't want to walk into it. It's not a trap. It's not a trap. <laughs> Yeah, the the nugget hop. It has an eight. It has an alpha of uh, twelve to fourteen percent. To be yeah. fair, I didn't yeah. know that's how they named it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I didn't yeah, know they took it from the, it's the actually hop named itself. As in the nectar from the nugget hops. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> Trogs, good You're work. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, th uh, this is also typically used in ESBs, stouts, and barley wines for when they want to bitter them. Like I said before, this is a specifically used for bittering hop. But the Nugget Nectar takes a bit of a different turn on it. It actually utilizes mm -hmm. its flavor, which I is kind of different. So yeah, just had one last night. Yeah, but it's but it's the most prevalent one of them all. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, you guys can finish up your candies, or if you're Adam, you can I'll, spit them out, I'll and start. we'll move on to our third one. Okay. We'll start chewing. <laughs> all right. Welcome back. We are here with our third candy mm. for the evening. I know Adam's super excited. Great. <laughs> Here's yours. Thank you, There's good yours. sir. Now, I'm going to make this round worth double points, even though you guys have gotten zero points so far. <laughs> well, you can quadruple <laughs> zero, and it's still zero. <laughs> right. As you chew on this one, though, this hop is mainly used for flavoring. This is, it's again, it's not a background hop. It's very forward, but it's not for necessarily being a bitter hop. It's one of those hops that you would act actually find in lupulin powder and a lot of these hazy IPAs that are coming out. Mm. It's definitely very light. Yeah. It is. It's not terrible. Not terrible. Yeah, I gave you a break on this you one. You did, Adam. and I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely an Adam hop. Yeah. Yes, it is. So uh, no to give you the alpha acid on this one, it's 4.5% to 6%. Mm. So it's, it's not terribly big, but when used in quantity, it definitely imparts a lot of flavor. Uh, the flavor it's shooting for is a lot of citrus and pine mm. flavoring as well. Mm. Now, I've been saying this all night. Okay. So I'm not going to stop now. All right. Is this the Cascade Hop? You have got it. Oh, damn. It's <laughs> well done. <laughs> Dennis comes in real quick <laughs> with the win. Hey, just consistent. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, just a little bit more about it, though. Uh, it's primarily used in pale ales and IPAs. Even though it has a small alpha, if you start using it in a lot of, uh, just in quantity, Mm. It will give a lot of flavor to it, and it will impart a lot of IBUs. Uh, one of the more famous IPAs used with the Cascade is the Six Point Resin, which clocks in at 103 IBUs. It's a oh. stupid amount of IBUs. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Excellent beer, though. No, I love it. <laughs> I would you would, too. Yeah, you would hate it. <laughs> uh, but the Cascade Hop is also, it is the most popular American craft beer hop. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, it's, see it everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tons it's, of it's beers. It's the most common one used. So, yeah. Again, it's because of those low, low alphas, but if you start doubling up, it will impart a lot of flavor mm. on there. So, yeah. So, you guys did good. Thank you. Ish. Well, <laughs> some more than others. Oh, oh, definitely. Oh, no doubt about it. You know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And we will present Dennis with his prize, and we'll uh, wrap up the show. I have a feeling I know what it is. You might. Okay. <laughs> so with that, I can present Dennis with his prize because hmm. you actually guessed the Cascade Hop. Good. Well, yeah. yeah. And your prize is a copy of Postgrad starring Sweet. Alexis Bledel, star of Gilmore Girls. Uh, you know, I'll Very popular it. DVD, especially on this show. If you've ever watched any other episode. <laughs> we've, we've been meaning to have a date night, so I guess, you know, pop some popcorn, drink some beers. Right. Perfect. Oh. Bring some hop candy. Zone. So you okay. Give me some? So here's the thing: people love to put raisinets in popcorn. Ooh. What if we start putting hop candy in popcorn? Ah, that's next level. That's smart. We're memeing it right These now. Are user, <laughs> here's how we use our brains: we invent things. So with that, I do want to thank everybody who helps us on the show. Uh, without the crew behind the cameras and people in the control room. Uh, we wouldn't have a show, so that's pretty important for us. <laughs> right. Oh, definitely. The puppet master. Yeah, yeah. I uh, want to thank Dennis for coming on. I uh, want to thank it. you for bringing a Saison that doesn't suck. I like that. I love how that. <laughs> well, I'm actually happy it doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the first one outside of uh, Sammy and I who've actually had it, both of you guys. Oh, cool, so cool, I cool. appreciate then that. Then you are nice. batting a thousand. Nice. Oh, man, I like it. I'm a superhero. <laughs> nice. 
Adam, would you like to tell people where they can find us? Yes. Elsewhere. Yes, Our I other would. works and... Our other works. So, in addition to this TV show, uh, we actually also host a podcast, uh, a weekly podcast based here in Pittsburgh. It is called the Hop Nation USA. Uh, you can find us uh, with our weekly episodes on our website, hopnationusa.com. Uh, if you enjoy the social medias, as many people do, you can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. And I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. All you have to do is search Hop Nation USA, and that should pull up a link to something of ours. Yes. Uh, if you want to watch new episodes of Yin's Brewing, or if you just want to binge us like a Netflix special, you can visit mca-tv.org. And that will bring you to the TV station, and you can watch our fine programming, and you can watch a whole bunch of other TV shows mm -hmm. as well. Watch ours first. We're then, the best. Yeah. <laughs> we're number one. And then go on to the others, <laughs> despite us being completely new. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone so, was new at one point. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, again, thanks everybody. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll be back with another episode soon.